Hello and welcome to my video about ancient coins of Marcus Aurelius and the history behind them. This video is designed to give you an overview about the age where Marcus Aurelius lived in, how he got there, and the various different types of ancient Roman coins uh, that are even available to this day that you could buy to this day. So um, let me first tell you a little bit about who I am. My name is Elias Loban. I'm an expert enthusiast, uh, author and dealer in ancient uh, Greek and Roman coins. I love ancient coins and I also have incidentally these coins available for sale. But you can check that out later with the article that's linked to below. So let's get started and let me give you a little bit of a history lesson. Um, going through these coins and then I'll show you some uh, reference books and uh, a lot more resources that you may want to enjoy. So, <clears throat> Marcus Aurelius was part of what was known as the adoptive emperors. The adoptive emperors um, started after the end of the Flavian dynasty. So what happened was you had first the Julio-Claudian dynasty, then you had the Flavian dynasty, and then you had a period of uh, almost 100 years where you had adoptive emperors which pretty much meant that instead of uh, having uh, their sons as successors to the throne, uh, they would actually adopt uh, well-abled generals in order to um, rule the empire. So the series starts with Nerva. Nerva was an elderly you know, senator and he wound up actually adopting, his coins are, you know, a lot more rare as he, he was an emperor for only a very short time. So Nerva wound up adopting as his son the emperor uh, Trajan. See, Trajan, 98 to 117 AD. And uh, Trajan was a really great general. And, uh, he expanded the empire greatly. And this one uh, is actually shows Emperor Trajan on top of a platform with the king of um, Parthia kneeling before him. So this is a pretty rare coin. It's also it's in a really decent condition. Notice the, the beautiful glossy uh, greenish brown patina that this coin has. Also the sharp details. So basically Nerva adopted Trajan and then we move, move on to Hadrian. Hadrian um, did not was not as um, expansionistic to the empire as Trajan was. Uh, the The empire perhaps extended to its furthest heights under Trajan, ninety eight to one seventeen. When Hadrian came to power, he was adopted again uh, to be be the next emperor. Uh, when Hadrian came to power, he uh, let some of the empire's uh, frontiers go, and he just decided to have more of a peaceful reign where he built up Athens and things like that. And the, the, these are actually Cistercius coins. Cistercius coins was the biggest denomination of bronze coinage that the Roman emperors issued in, in the Roman mint. So this is an interesting coin. So that's 117 to 138. Don't worry, we'll get to uh, Marcus Aurelius in a second. I'm just painting a overall picture where he came in. So Hadrian adopted Antoninus Pius to be, um, you know, emperor who was from circa 138 to 16180. This is a silver denarius coin. This is a standard den denomination silver coin that, uh, you know, people, you know, used in Rome. The only bigger silver coins were in the provinces. Those were the tetradrachm coins of Antioch uh, and several other cities in the east. Those are known as Greek imperial or Roman provincial coins. Antoninus Pius' um, wife was uh, Faustina I. And... Um, from young childhood, Marcus Aurelius, as depicted on this coin, was groomed to be the next emperor. See, that's the next emperor. Um, you know, he's wearing a bare headdress and uh, basically no headdress, bare head. 
And um, this is him as Caesar. The title of being as Caesar uh, meant being as a prince next in line for the throne. And being Augustus, AVG, was the title of, um, of being, you know, the, the senior emperor. So there would be, you know, the emperor, um, and then there would be the Caesars. Next. This is actually a Greek imperial slash Roman provincial coin of ancient Cyprus. Again, it features Antoninus Pius and his adoptive son, Marcus Aurelius, being groomed. So this, this side has Marcus Aurelius and this side has uh, Antoninus Pius. And uh, this is from the Cyprus mint. Very, very rare provincial mint. And it's also a Cistercius uh, sized coin. Very interesting. Next. There was supposed to be somebody that was going to, there was um, uh, told by Hadrian to Antoninus Pius to um, also come to power. And his name was Aelius. His coins are very rare and uh, I have one of his also in fantastic condition. But he died very quickly. And um, yeah, that's what happened. You know, see, right even before Antoninus Pius became um, emperor. See, 138 to 136, uh, 138 to 161. And this guy's 136 to 137. So this guy was groomed to be, you know, one of the next emperors. But he did have a son who became co emperor with Marcus Aurelius. Next, we finally get to the co coin of Marcus Aurelius. The reason I chose this coin is that it has actually a really decent uh, portrait of the emperor. To this day, Rome still has some amazing um, busts of Marcus Aurelius and including one horse, a gilded horse that was um, of uh, Marcus Aurelius on a horseback and uh, it was covered in gold and uh, it's just uh, the most stunning depiction of equestrian depiction of um, Marcus Aurelius on horseback. It's still in the in a Roman museum, and one of the reasons that it was actually preserved to this day because the Vatican, uh, the uh, when the the popes had you know had all these treasures, they thought it was actually a statue of Constantine the Great. So that statue still survives to this day. Uh, the portraiture style is amazing. Now a little bit more about Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius was known as a philosopher emperor. His uh, works, such as the Meditations, are still read to this day. He was uh, Stoic, and um, <clears throat> and he did some um, you know interesting things. And uh, during his time, the Roman Empire was incredibly wealthy. He again, he was one of the adoptive emperors, as I mentioned, adopted by Antoninus Pius. So what wound up happening is that this guy's son, Lucius Verus, became co-emperor with Marcus Aurelius. Lucius Verus uh, was not really the most able of administrators. He liked to drink and he liked to party, uh, but not so much. He left the, the empire rulership uh, to Marcus Aurelius to do. So, um, yet, you know, whenever they did um, do have a victory, like this one uh, is, uh, looks like victory over Parthia. And uh, they shared this... Uh, uh, victories in both their coins uh, of um, you know that features both Marcus Aurelius and um, <clears throat> Lucius Verus. He did die pretty early, you know, 160, but you know he didn't have a good time. Next, this is a Cistercius coin of Faustina Jr. Faustina the second. Faustina the second was uh, the daughter of Faustina the first, wife of Antoninus Pius. So, Antoninus Pius adopted um, Marcus Aurelius as his son and gave his daughter in marriage for him to, you know, have a son with. And here's another coin of Faustina Jr. This is an Oz coin. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the difference between um, a Cistercius and an Oz. My understanding is uh, the denomination this one would be this one would be four times as valuable as this one. So you could trade four of these for one of these coins. And then there was also a, a step in between a Depulandius coin, which where two of those would equal to this one. 
but either, both are very beautiful and both interesting. This one actually features Diana holding the torch. This is a representation that could be of Diana, Diana or Artemis as the moon goddess. You know, when she holds the torch, Diana is the goddess of the hunt. So she also did had a lot of other functions, just like um, Hermes or Mercury had uh, many different other functions. Uh, he was the god of commerce, messenger god, and things like that. So this is an exceptionally beautiful coin. Notice the patina, notice the portrait style. One of the things I especially love about ancient Roman coins is that the beautiful style of the portraits that they had. Again, this is a denarius coin. And this one features a peacock. There has been um, several issues, actually. Uh, there were postumus which um, honor an emperor or an empress with an inscription called consecratio or a consecration issue. And sometimes they have a pyre. And uh, this, is a, this is an interesting one because as, as it showed, um, <clears throat> showed a consecration issue with the peacock. Incidentally, this one is also um, consecration or uh, post almost issue. You see, it says Diva Faustina, Diva Augusta Faustina, and um, yeah. Next, Commodus. This is the, the emperor that was the son of Marcus Aurelius. At a certain point in his reign, he... Um, Completely lost it, and he thought himself to be a uh, divine reincarnation of Hercules. And there's even a bust of uh, him in Rome, where it features him wearing the lion skin headdress, just as Hercules did. Incidentally, also, um, Alexander the Great is uh, depicted on his coins as Hercules. So perhaps uh, he was just, um, you know, following suit of other people that... He, um, but he really did believe himself to be very powerful and strong, and he did um, participate in gladiator fights. He was uh, a bit bloodthirsty, very, very tall and very strong. And um, Marcus Aurelius and Commodus are both de de depicted in the film The Gladiator, you know, the Hollywood film with Russell Crowe. Here is another coin of Commodus. Silver denarius coin. So we're talking about circa 190 to 191. So when Marcus Aurelius chose to, instead of adopting a more able administrator, chose to have Commodus become the next emperor, he broke tradition with what was, you know, with many emperors, Nerva adopting Trajan, then to Hadrian, to Antoninus Pius, then Marcus Aurelius. He broke tradition with it, and um, during the time of Commodus, Commodus was uh, very cruel, and um, there was some issues and challenges under his reign. The wife of Commodus was Crispina. Next, now that we've uh, discussed these coins, click the link below, and uh, you can see the actual article that feature you know these coins and pictures of these coins but you may also want to learn more about ancient coins and coin collecting so one of the first things that I recommend maybe if you like DVDs and videos is a thing by the great courses called Emperors of Rome and um, it's, a it's a pretty powerful course where it describes a lot of the different emperors not in so much detail as, you know, history books, but it's a very easy you know, thing to watch. Now, if you're a beginning co beginner collecting, I, re I recommend Ancient Coin Collecting 3 uh, by Wayne G. Sales. The, these are linked in my article, by the way, so you can check that out. And uh, it's a very nice, concise book where it gives uh, short biographies of the different emperors, showing some of the coins that they had, the dominant denominations, and uh, it's a very inexpensive book to actually buy. It's, in, it's probably about 20 bucks. Uh, link is also given below. Now, you may be actually interested in, as I mentioned before, you know, I'm selling, these coins are available currently for sale as the, at the time of the making of the film. One of, one of the benefits of uh, buying from me is the professional presentation you get. 
You also get with me a beautiful certificate of authenticity and of course a lifetime guarantee of authenticity. So what the benefit is is that when you um, have this coin it's going to make a great heirloom, make a great collectible, make a great gift also because you're going to be able to give a person a nice presentation such as this um, with every coin that you purchase and of course a lifetime guarantee. And you see this number matches a certificate the certificate so you could always have the certificate on your bookshelf and uh, stored for future things also it adds to the resale value of the coin so when you have a nice professional presentation like this and you you deal with a reputable dealer um, the value of the coin actually is um, you know in, in a lot of ways much greater so I'm looking forward to dealing with you soon my friends and I hope you enjoyed this fantastic um, you know collection of authentic ancient Roman coins dealing with Marcus Aurelius and the historical background behind his reign. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.